question of atheism as a dynamic dissenting force in society, as a source of nonconformity, is a topic that is important to the restructuring of society. The role that atheism plays within society, within the development of society, is a topic that we hardly ever see addressed. We see individuals address the topic of religion over and over again and claim that it has a very high social value. But I think that at this point in history, that atheism occupies one of the most unique places in society because atheism, from its very introduction into the social body, into the body politic, it's a position of resistance. It's a position of pushing against. And this matters because this act of pushing against, when you have a society that is steeped in superstition, our denial, our delusion, this rational act of pushing against becomes a form of intelligence. It becomes a form of salvation, of redeeming the society from its own pathology. Now, I think that atheism can serve a revolutionary role in society at this point. If there are atheists who are intelligent enough to organize and to conduct themselves with discipline, this matters. If they are intelligent enough to organize and to conduct themselves with discipline, why do I make the claim that atheism can play a revolutionary role in society at this point in history? Because we are seeing the rise of a Christian nationalism. We are seeing the militant rise of fundamentalism, of religious extremism. Atheism is an antidote to this position if it approaches the situation from a stance of intelligence. That means that atheism doesn't just charge in reactionary or defensive or angry. It means that atheism studies the psychological structures of persuasion and seeks to conduct itself and to perform the tactics, the techniques of persuasion that ultimately deflate the extremist and the fundamentalist psychology. Now, the act of doing this in society first of all, requires education on the part of atheists. And I think atheists in general tend to educate themselves. But here we're talking about a much more disciplined approach to society, a much more disciplined approach to culture. These intelligent atheists who are smart enough to organize and conduct themselves with discipline, wield tremendous polemical power, rational power, public sphere power, discourse power within the public sphere. Because the atheist position 
has the motivation and the rational power to refute the fundamentalist line of Christianity that is rising up in different parts of the world, but specifically within the United States. Deconstructing this fundamentalism, I believe, is crucial to dismantling this nationalist movement of Christianity. And the deconstruction of this fundamentalism takes place on the basis of the premises of fundamentalism itself. That is the appropriate way to refute and deconstruct fundamentalism, to use its premises against itself. One of the things that I have realized about our time is that the psychology of culture, of social media, the individuals who interact on social media, they're drawn to exchanges not that exemplify a careful, rational critique or refutation or criticism of a position, but they are drawn to content, to information, to displays of defiance and resistance that contain high levels of emotional disregard or that contain high levels of emotional attack, of a psychological splitting, so that individuals are locked in their own cult settings. Society is essentially fragmented. It's fragmented into segments, and individuals become the occupants of these segments. And they become the devotees of these sects. And what they want to see is they want to see advocates for their particular fundamentalism, of their particular narrative, they want to see advocates for their position smash into, clash with individuals who oppose their narrative. And they want to see these individuals insult or, or verbally assault those who disagree with their narrative or their beliefs. And if they see someone assault them, verbally assault them, they say to them derogatory terms, you're an idiot, fuck you, you're a moron. Okay, this type of language, this type of display is very effective in the culture in which we live because the culture in which we live has been intellectually reduced in its rational capacity. So displays like this appeal to the primate's impulse structure, and individuals feel, when they see this, that they have actually seen something significant or substantive take place. And that's not the case. That's not what they've seen. That's not what's happened. They don't actually know how to evaluate when a substantive refutation has taken place. They don't actually have enough critical capacity to understand when something has been refuted. They are drawn to the passion, not the logic. They are drawn to the emotion, not the critical rationality. And what people should be drawn to is the critical rationality. A disciplined atheism, I believe, can help to restore this critical rationality. A critical atheism can begin to do many things in culture if the individuals who practice it are disciplined enough 
and intelligent enough to conduct themselves in a way in which they exemplify rational order. And if this happens, it can be an example in society and provide a testimony to a civil way of proceeding within the public sphere, within discourse, within a fragmented and polarized environment that shows us how to navigate through it. Now, it doesn't just have to be atheism, but the reason that I talk about atheism is because I am an atheist. And the other thing about it is that atheists, they already tend to be at a more important place philosophically. I can say this better. Atheists already tend to have a worldview, an understanding of reality that grounds them in a way that makes them more effective or so that they can be more effective because they don't have a body of delusions. They don't have a series of delusions that they need to overcome before they can begin the rationalization process in society. This is not, they don't have to do this. So I feel that atheists are in a sense working with reality at the existential level, which is to say their ontological disposition towards reality puts them in a place where they can be more effective because they are essentially, they realize the context, the environment that they are existing in. So they know what they're up against, essentially. Um, and because of this, they are able to go up against the authoritarian social structures, knowing what's at stake. And these individuals, atheists in a sense, are already ready to do this. Whereas if you go into other subcultures in society, they're not necessarily ready to do this because their existential philosophy, their existential awareness, their existential ontology is skewed, is distorted with superstitions. So the atheist, in a sense, doesn't have this. So it can be a starting point to move into a stronger political position or a stronger social position to draw society in the direction of humanism. So the last thing to say is that the goal of essentially every political ideology, of every progressive and liberal ideology, the goal of all of these different worldviews is essentially humanism. And the reason we say it's humanism is because the values that are espoused in these philosophies, in these political ideologies, in these political ideals or values, are values that are humanistic. That is what these political ideologies are advocating for. But most of them are not aware of it. So atheism, developing properly, transitions into humanism because atheism is just the negative stance to the positive claims of theism. But what that atheism transitions into is essentially a substantive position, which is the position of humanism. And this position of humanism is a position that allows us 
to try and cultivate the intelligence and civility of a secular world. Atheism is just a starting point, a rational mediation that allows humanity to bridge over, to transition over into humanism. The goal is essentially the integration of humanism into society. And this is very important because humanism has the capacity to transform society in ways that we can't even imagine. We had 2,000 years of Christianity and it prevented the world from progressing into more advanced and civil forms. It kept men in bondage. It restricted the capacity of imagination and freedom. What if we had 2,000 years of humanism? What would the world look like with 2,000 years of humanism? I think that would be an extraordinary thing. And I think that that is the thing that we should strive for. It is an ideal that should instill hope in our hearts because it's a real possibility. And if it ever comes to be celebrated in the world like a religion, and it's an anti-religion, it is a sublated religion, it will transform humanity with its values in ways that will progress our species into heights of intelligence and compassionate societies of civility that will ultimately lead to a life that is worth living.